Governance is often thought of as governments doing something, yet it is much more than governments doing something. From our perspective at C2G, uh, we look at governance as, uh, first of all, identifying and engaging different stakeholders, then making sure that these stakeholders have access to information so that they can effectively participate in a broad range of actions, including choices about technologies, about whether or not uh, to deploy them, if yes, how, and uh, also about choices and taking eventual decisions about regulating these technologies if they're uh, decided to be deployed. We believe that uh, different stakeholders need to be engaged in the governance process and it depends on which technology and which approach we're talking about. When it comes to one at one extreme solar radiation modification like stratospheric aerosol injection, it will have an impact on everybody. And not only everybody in the world living today, but also on future generations. So we have to find a way to talk to, to engage everybody in the in the conversations that lead to societal choices. Now, that's a very difficult process to include 8 billion people, but there are ways. And for other areas of concern in society, uh, the world has found ways to consult with different groups. So it is possible, it is difficult, but we need to do that. When it comes to uh, 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 simple technologies like painting your roof uh, white, then obviously it might involve the local uh, town council uh, because uh, you know if every house becomes white roof, maybe that will have a different impact on different people living in that particular town. So then you can look at a much smaller set of stakeholders. So one has to look at the technology, one has to look at what are the impacts on people and what kind of choices need to be made, and then you can decide who needs to be involved in the stakeholder discussions. When it comes to uh, a carbon dioxide removal, there is quite a bit of governance framework at the both at the national level and at the international level that are already in place. Uh, so it's not a question of finding new governance structures, but it's about how do you fill the gaps in governance in the existing institutions at the national level and at the international level. Do we have focused on the, the gaps at the international level? And most of those can be met by advancing work in the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change, and also, to some extent, the Convention on Biological Diversity, the UN Convention on Desertification and Land Degradation, and a few others. Uh, so uh, th that's it's it's really about filling the gaps and improving existing governance. When it comes to solar radiation modification, particularly challenging issues like stratospheric aerosol injection. There, there is practically no existing international governance mechanism that could address the totality of the issues. That doesn't mean that some existing governance mechanisms couldn't be used uh, to support uh, work uh, to decide whether or not to use, for example, stratospheric aerosol injection, and if it, the decision is to, do, to, to say yes, then how to do it. So elements do exist. Uh, such as the World Meteorological Organization in terms of uh, monitoring the atmosphere, uh, such as the UN Environment Assembly. Uh, and of course, we do have the UN General Assembly to look at the totality of these issues. And we do have the UN Security Council that can address the security and geopolitical implications. So there are elements and perhaps what is needed is to look at what each of these governance mechanisms can do what else is missing and what sort of mechanism might be necessary to bring all this together.